and hit it. Yeah, I think we're recording. Okay. Okay. Hi, hi. Welcome to the Unapologetically Child Free Podcast, where you find that child free community that you never knew existed. And now you can't live without. I'm Maggie Dickens, a licensed therapist, but most importantly, I'm your child free hype woman. I'm Kelly Altruda. I'm a licensed architect, and I'm the happy leader of my pack, including two dogs and a baby tortoise and my husband. Uh, I think the baby tortoise is the most important part of this because I think she's so the too. newest. Yeah. Don't tell the dogs she, I said well, that, though. I won't. Oh, well, they heard you. They're sitting right here, as always. They're going to be so yeah. mad. going to hold it against me. I, sh- I should bring Moira in to be the little guest because she's like the size she, of my paw. She definitely she needs my guest to, to be a guest for sure. Let's see what she has to say. Okay. All right. This is going to be an episode, man. This is going to be... It's going to be okay. something. We it's are okay. talking. We'll we are going to get through it. We're going to get through it because we're we talking all things patriarchy, misogyny, the misunderstandings mm-hmm. of what it's like to be a child-free and a childless person. Not only yeah. just like now, but also talking about how some of these conversations of childless cat ladies have become a thing and, and all of that. We're going to be talking J.D. Vance, Andrew Tate. That Will Chamberlain mm. dude who I'd never heard of before. <laughs> and But unfortunately, we know his name now. Yeah. That's a sad part. Whatever. Ugh. I don't know. How, how are you feeling about the topic? How are you feeling about it? I I feel like it's something that's really important that needs to be brought up. Mm-hmm. Because a, fe- a lot of what's happening, particularly where in my country, is affecting us directly. Yeah. And these are things that I didn't think would happen that I could see happen in my country. Yeah. And and it feels so, so personal. I know yeah. for me why I wanted to talk about this is it doesn't even yeah. feel abstract. I know that's really crummy. Most of the time we all get interested in something because it has to do with us like on a personal level. But this really does. It really yeah. does have to do with, right. with us. So, Well, over half the population of the United States, really. The world, right? Is it 51%? Oh, well, yeah. Yeah. We're getting yeah. too far in. We're getting too yeah. far in. Let's. Let's like take a breath. Okay. Let's kind of do our little bit of our little wind down before we, I guess, get hyped up. Cheers. Yeah. Cheers with our water today. Let's talk about what's going on with us. I've been reading some amazing books. You just told me that mm-hmm. you finished your first book of the year, which is surprising to me because you used yeah. to outread me. Well, I dug into a book by an author that I love, Kristen Hanna, and... I can usually blow through her books. Mm-hmm. Like they're and they're pretty hefty reads. They're heavy and this one was particularly heavy. It was The Four Winds. Uh, it's it's slow. It's slow moving. Mm-hmm. It's, you know, basically if you don't know the premise of the story of the book, it's depression era with the dust bowl and people moving from the Great Plains to California to try to find work mm-hmm. and feed their families and it was pretty freaking heavy considering like the rhetoric against people coming in and taking jobs. Yeah. Like it was, I realized that it was pretty, rel- it's like, like history does repeat itself. It, and it so does. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just on different levels. And, but it was definitely worth picking it up and finishing that last hundred pages that I've been putting off. I sobbed and sobbed and sobbed. It was so good. I highly recommend if you haven't read anything by Chris and Hannah, just pick something up by her. The Great Alone, wow. uh, that that was my first one by her that I read, and it was so good. The first- Alaska. The first- Oh, yes. The Alaska one. I think that was the first one of hers that I read as well, and I read it yeah. when I ear-read it. And you like <laughs> actual physical books. You're not even a Kindle Yeah. Reader, right? No, I can't read them on the iPad, the Kindle, anything. I have to have the actual book. I just smell it, feel it. I do appreciate that. Like, living abroad, yeah. though, like- it's hard for me to accumulate anything. I am shocked. I'm shocked that it's take that you have read like one <laughs> book this year. It's but it's also been a heavy year. It has been mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's been a heavy year with a lot of family issues. Not listening to books, I think, and not doing right. even the Kindle or like the e-readers to take it everywhere. Like this little thing fits in. Yeah. We both have the same purse. This fits in our purse. Right. Teeny. Oh, it does? Yeah. Our purses are tiny. I know. But yeah, adding one more thing to lug across the country, you know, yeah. every time I've gone back and forth. I didn't have the mental, like I didn't have space for that. 
I so. I like stopped reading a lot of the things that people think are like really important reads because I don't have the mental space. Mm-hmm. Being a licensed therapist, being in this unapologetic child free space and having right. conversations with people in my DMs on Instagram and all of that, like heavy, heavy topics. Right. Every now and again, I'm just like, I need something like really just uplifting. Yeah. So historical fiction. Yep. I read a lot of like serial killer stuff and i'm not talking like crime dramas of like that's heavy i know but it's not like solving the crime it's just like right like right now i'm I'm reading i'm listening to a book that's like it's a smut book but it's like a serial killer smut book i know i know it's i mean i did the whole like fairy smut and that was just like i really like i prefer light reads a serial killer smut book Light me. If that's not a window into my world. Easy on the palate. Easy on the palate. Yeah. Yeah. That That's me. Mm-hmm. That's that's me. Yeah. One of the books I'm reading right now, though, is called Love and Color. And yeah. I'm just going to, like, take a minute and I'm going to read, like, the first one or two sentences and just balance it out with I love, you know, serial killer or books. smut. And Mm -hmm. this one, to say that I love love would probably be akin to me saying that I'm quite fond of inhaling oxygen. Love is the prism through which I view the world. I truly believe it bonds and propels us. Oh, did you write that? No, but she she read into my soul. But the heavy stuff. Yeah, yeah. it doesn't have to be as heavy as like car smut. (laughs) So this is this is now what I'm going to be known for is like the balance of like the most <laughs> sappy like love books. sappy romantic like a hallmark but hallmark needs to like touch on this genre for you I know I know do like a Christmas time horror smut well, movie I I kind of feel like I should like <laughs> license them like my partner and I's story because I feel like uh, that's like a whole <laughs> harm story in itself. I was gonna, I was gonna say, how is that horror smut? He doesn't know it, it yet, but it's coming. Oh man. Oh man. I okay. How does he put up with you? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how he puts up with me, but lucky for me, he does. Oh so. my goodness. Lucky for you. <laughs> let's get into okay. the scary. Part. All right. Let's get into misogyny. Oh, and oh. <laughs> that's worse than horror smut. Oh yeah. Okay. All right. I'm I'm feeling sad. Like just like feeling hey. like I don't know. Like talking about this just makes me feel like I I've, I've even like shrunk in my chair. I'm just like brick it, man. Get take up space, right. Maggie. Take up Here space. What would you tell your clients? Take up space. I would. I would say that. Take up space. Okay. So, let me just start with this. My goal for this whole episode of talking about the patriarchy and misogyny and all of it is to take back a little bit of the narrative of what it's like for a woman who doesn't have kids for whatever flipping reason she doesn't have kids for whatever reason a uterus owner in general does not have kids is none of anybody else's business and for hundreds of years there has been this pushback. We've been called witches. We've been called all kinds of words that we're just not going to say on the pod right now because (laughs) there's just this bias against women who are making a choice for their own lives, for their own bodies, Mm -hmm. and not catering to this kind of traditional, quote unquote, lifestyle. And the rhetoric that we're hearing coming out of public figures specifically in the United States, which is where you and I are both from, but also Mm -hmm. starting to see ripples throughout the world of just negativity. And it affects me and it affects you and it affects our community as a whole. And it can feel really daunting, at least in my opinion. Like it can feel daunting to be like, if I'm the only person who I know who doesn't have kids and then I hear like a popular figure talk shit Mm -hmm. about me or it feels like me. Right. It can feel as if there's something wrong with me and all of that. So that's my goal. My goal here is to poke holes in all of that BS, frankly. I like that. (laughs) That's not so scary. That's actually pretty easy to do. Yeah, it is. I'm Well, because they're wrong. They're just straight up wrong. All right. Mm -hmm. So we're going to talk about the Beast. We're going to talk about J.D. Vance because he's had a lot to say. Sorry, I have poker face. 
I mean, oh. I think I think Lady Gaga would forgive you <laughs> if you didn't uh, have your. I think so. Like I on. like I could have just openly vomited when you said his name. I don't know. Yeah. I gotta say, I think that it's across the board. A lot of people aren't really digging this guy and what he's saying mm-hmm. because it has been with his comments about people not being qualified because they've never given birth. The president that has given birth. This is true. We never have. None of these arguments go towards men who choose not to have children. None of them. I'm going to back up for just a second. I am going to pull up some of his comments because I want to be able oh. to fully quote it, right? So, because okay. I think that's important. We're talking about J.D. Vance. And yep. the thing that got everything started, right, is that this, is, and this was an interview he did back in 2021, which apparently mm-hmm. no one paid attention to, probably because no one knew who he was. He said the United States is being run by childless cat ladies with no direct stake in the future of the country. And he further says they're miserable at their own lives and their choices that they've made so that they want to make the rest of the country miserable, too. Take that big gulp of water and then tell me your thoughts. Like, just the immediate... Well, I mean... it. I, I think that people kind of miss the point that when you start saying that someone doesn't have a stake in the future, I'm probably jumping ahead here. He made the point that not only does he think that we're we're the ones that are driving the narrative, which we are not, <laughs> clearly, but also like as far as having less voting rights, oh. it also leads itself to other issues. It can open the door for ageism, too, to say... You know, at what point should you not allow somebody to have voting rights because they may not be alive in 10 years? Yeah. Well, people with terminal illness, you know, like why why do we discriminate against anybody that that lives here? Mm-hmm. Because any decisions that are made have direct impact on me. I may not have children, but I do care about my friends' kids. I care about my nephews. I care about my other family members. I care about my aging parents. I care about the world. And I think you brought up I care about everybody. You brought up a really good point about just like the discrimination. One of the things within the child free community that I hear a lot of is people they didn't recognize the discrimination that they were getting from their friends and family when it came Mm -hmm. to making plans, when it came to how they were included in their family's decisions or extended family's decisions. Until they found the child-free community and started realizing, oh, it that there are boundaries that say things like, you know, oh, simply because I'm the person who doesn't have kids doesn't mean that I should right. be the one who travels every single holiday right, right. or that my stuff is not as important or, as, right. you know, all of these things. And so that discrimination that we see on a daily basis is being extrapolated out into this massive suggestion that people who have not had biological children, because Kamala Harris is a step parent, but we're using his term childless cat ladies, is right, right. that somehow that there is we are less than because yeah. we haven't used our uterus in the way that he thinks that we should and right. or that other people think that we should. And that in itself right. is just simply saying if you're different from me or you live your mm-hmm. life in a way that I would not live i would choose not to that you're wrong right you're bad right i have i have a fundamental like i have an authority complex like i have an authority issue it's why i've never been a good employee like i mean i was a great employee until i wasn't right. you know right. like no, i had to go work out on my own or go work for myself because when people are saying fit into this box or right. we're going to treat you differently. We're going to try to take away your rights. We're going to treat you less than human. Mm-hmm. We're going to treat you less important yeah. because you are unmarried. You don't have kids. You don't own a home. You don't this. You don't this. You don't this. It's like the hell, right. man. Yeah. I'm a human. Where I'm a human. And why? Yeah. Yeah. Life, li- liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, but only if it checks my boxes. Yeah. I just, That's- it to me, it's scary because. This rhetoric of like anti child free is also anti woman. 100% control Mm -hmm. that a woman's place is in the nuclear family at home raising the kids. Yeah. It's not in the boardroom. It's not as president of the United States. I beg to differ. You made a really good point that it's not about not having kids, it's about 
this attack on women. If a woman has children and mm-hmm. she pursues a job outside of being a mom, right? There's this I call it mom on mom crime, where it's like mm-hmm. this judgment of is she even being a good parent by doing this, right. which is crap. But then there's also this this thing of if she doesn't go to work and is a stay at home mom, then she's right. not doing this or that, and then a woman decides not to have kids. And now here's all this judgment about how she's less than. So this is just one more, yeah. like it's just more evidence of the rhetoric that people are attempting to say that women in general, because they have, you know, female reproductive organs, that right. that they're less than, they're less than human. And right. that pisses me off because it is, it's fundamentally taking away from the fact that like, I contribute a ton to this world. Mm-hmm. Even if I didn't, it didn't ma- it wouldn't matter. But I do. Right. Right. And is our sole purpose to procreate. Ugh. No. If and and I think it was Jennifer Aniston that actually made the comeback to the comment about the cat women and she basically turned it on him and said, "I hope that your daughters never have to turn I'm paraphrasing. Yeah. I hope your daughter never has to turn to IVF." Because you're taking that away from them, too. Yes. You want to. I don't think that we have the privilege anymore to not talk about this. Just like with so, like you had said, it's sad that things have to directly impact us for us to really start digging into them. Maybe we shouldn't be so focused on just the things that impact us directly. Yeah. Because every law, every ruling, it doesn't matter if it's not directly about us. It still is. Yeah. It's still it. I'm so glad that you brought up the Jennifer Aniston thing because so J.D. Vance has come out and basically been like, why you got to bring my daughter into this? And it's like, yeah, because she because has a uterus. Because she is part of it. Yeah. <laughs> like and he came out. He came out and said, listen, I have nothing against cats. Oh, that's what he said. That was his I comeback. Explicitives. <laughs> insert explicitives. I never thought that I would see this in my country. We've seen women treated, women just in general, treated terribly around the world in so many cultures. And like, oh, that would never happen here. Oh, that. As soon as you say that, that's when it happens. I mean, I would argue, though, it's been happening. It's just been quieter. Right. The discrimination has somewhere along the way in the last 10 years, maybe someone would correct me and say it's been longer, has just heightened and it's obvious. I will even say in the professional world, I was pretty active working in other offices probably 20 years ago. And it was even 20 years ago, you know, I work in a very male dominated field. It, it's never gone away. It's always been there. The misogyny, the, you know, and the, the really smart, the really smart employers knew that women were key. They knew that women were important. And I did work for an employer who knew that. And he put a woman basically to be his next in charge when he was no longer there. Best decision he could have made. And I'm not saying I'm not saying that it was just because it was a woman. She was smart and he knew it and he did not discredit her for being a woman. You're bringing up a really great point because it's not just like support women simply because they're a woman. It's recognizing that right. women are going and seeking out higher education at higher rates than men are. Right. Women are right. shown to be able to multitask better. All humans suck at it, but we multitask better. <laughs> we are doing a lot of the emotional labor and the that invisible right. labor within um head relationships. And mm-hmm. so we have this this brain that works. I know that for me and in my partnership, I am so aware of like I'm observant of so many things that he is just like completely oblivious to and they're the details now on the flip side I can miss really obvious things and he points them out to me but it's just something that we have to recognize that as we've been raising young girls to be the women like you and I we're bringing something different to the table we were raised to be more mature than our male counterpart. Boys will be boys. Boys get to be silly. Boys get to be mm-hmm. playful. Boys get to F up. And they just yeah. get to like, oh, man, you know, like, that's the locker room talk or like on their, whatever, right? And, and on their off time, they get to be completely turned off. Yeah. Off, 
that sounds wrong. But, you know, on their on their <laughs> downtime, they don't have to do the laundry. Yeah. Like we have this this argument in our household and it's it's funny because, you know, like even even if I have a pretty heavy workload, I load the dishwasher, I clean the house, I do the laundry and I change the bed, you know, all these things. And nobody ever says, thank you for doing that. And I don't say, did you notice that I cleaned the house? Did you notice I did the laundry? Yeah. But and we joke about it all the time that when a man does it, it's like there has to be a parade or or it didn't happen. And honey, forgive me for saying this because he does. He has been doing a really good job of doing doing his part of the house stuff because it's not my job solely. Right. It's a partnership. It's a community. Right. So take that example right out from your specific yeah. household and make it universal. And what we're seeing yeah. is when people are working together then mm-hmm. for the common goal, things right, work right. better, right? I know people, yeah. there have been some articles that I've read that people are saying, parents are saying, where's the village? Where's the village that raises the child? And, and right. I think the village in the United States has been gone for a really long time because it's a very individualistic society. And it's not just yeah. the village that is excluding parents. It's the village that we don't have as child-free people. We're pushed to the corner right. if there's something wrong with us. And yeah, then to kind of come back to this this conversation about the misogyny that just continues, that rhetoric mm-hmm. that continues, I don't know if you saw yeah. this because I just got it in an email, is that J.D. Vance has said his comment about childless cat ladies was one sarcasm. I know. I know. My eyes are going to roll out of my head. They're going to pop out at the same time. (laughs) And then he said that the comment where he was like, children should have the most voting power and their parents should be in charge Mm -hmm. of, you know, basically facilitating their vote. What happens if you've got you've got a kid that's at odds with what their parents are going to vote? So in the UK, apparently, or in England specifically. Yeah. You can have someone vote on your behalf. I was speaking with someone here in Portugal who is from England and who did this. And yeah. they say, make sure you pick someone who will honor your decision. That's some trust right there. Like, I could I could trust my mom and yeah. to do that. But, yeah. I mean, that's a, isn't that an interesting thing that there's that trust there in England and here? I'm going to mm-hmm. get, you know, my ballot absentee and have to send it in. Right, and, right. You know, all of that. And it's right. going to be verified and, and all of that for my for my vote to be counted. Yeah. But it's interesting because he not only said that, you know, children should have the most say. Their parents should then be in control yeah. of, of facilitating that voting. But that child-free people should have less of a vote because we don't have that yeah. stake. He said yeah. that that was a merely a quote-unquote thought experiment. And... To to be fair, we can experiment with our thoughts. I'm all about creativity. However, yeah. whenever we spitball, whenever we mm-hmm. put out these thoughts, it's out into the world. Yeah. And you and I, we have been mm-hmm. in corporate America. We are, you know, how how do you identify? I'm a millennial. Are you a zennial or do you call yourself I am Gen X? I just say Gen X. I mean, that fit. Yeah. That fit. Yeah. Every now and again, you're a boomer, but it's fine. I'd say I'm more of a. Mo- I mean, that's true. Every now and again. I mean, you did go to Taylor tripping Swift over myself, you. tripping over myself to to say I'm sorry all the time. Why? Well, yes, that's a Midwestern too. Yes, and very woman. But yes, you did yes. come to Taylor Swift, so you're an honorary millennial. Good. <laughs> it's fine. You and I both know that words matter, and we yeah. are both being very particular and very cautious as we're talking right now right. to make sure to not step in it, yeah. to have something right. out into the ether, out into the interwebs that right. that we're right. just kind of like hypothesizing about that could come and bite yeah. us because we know as women, right. we're, I know yeah. I'm tempering my emotions right now because I don't want to come mm-hmm. off as quote unquote hysterical and all of those right. things. Right. And so this comment of childless cat ladies is sarcasm and saying yeah. that child-free people should have less of a vote is a thought experiment is so much BS because it furthers the misogyny. It's out there. It furthers the agenda to say that women, specifically those that don't have kids, women as a whole, are less than. And we can just talk yeah. crap about them. And we can 
experiment mm-hmm. with our thoughts of ways to take away their rights. And people are going to go, yeah. well, let's consider that. It's 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 testing the waters of what you can get away with. Yeah. And as history has shown, people who do rise to power can get away with some pretty heinous things yeah. if they just sneak it in there. They're just testing the waters. I think he also he also made a made a statement that child free people should have to pay more in taxes. Ah, huh, I saw that one. That doesn't that doesn't make a lot of sense to me, considering that we don't have a stake in the future. Well, we we don't have a stake in the future, so he's kind of double speaking there. But also, we take up less resources. We're we're kind of less of a liability on the whole system. Our our worth as a human being, it's not what we're producing for someone else. That's bullshit. I didn't choose to be put here. Yes. I've been brainwashed my whole life. Let's incentivize people having more kids. Let's incentivize that in order to create good little workers. You know, there was some of this rhetoric is about making sure that we have enough people to be in the military or to create wealth for someone else. That's part of the agenda. To incentivize the, the working class. And yeah. to do so in a way that is not giving these hypothetical children or the current children in the yeah. world the opportunity to become the quote-unquote elite class. That's not my purpose as a human being. I am going to say something here because the the double speak that was the child-free people don't have a stake in the future. So their vote yeah. should, should count less. They shouldn't be in politics and and running the country. Right. And at the same time they should pay more taxes. Yeah. It's interesting because if we take last, I mean, because we, we can see how, how absolutely asinine that is because those two things do not go together. Like if I don't have, right. if I don't have a stake right. in the future, then why am I paying for it? Right, um, right. But we both know I do have a stake in the future. I want humanity yeah. to continue and to be happy mm-hmm. and thrive and mm-hmm. better than what we're doing now. But, and, and please Please stick with me through this. I'm here. Here we go. I'm, this is I'm captive. This is a hot take. <laughs> I do think because that that statement was I think it said parents who make one hundred to three hundred thousand dollars a year, which by the way is a massive jump. Yeah. Those are totally different yeah. lifestyles of a hundred thousand to mm-hmm. three hundred thousand a year. I agree. Yeah, they were saying that it's a difference than child free mm-hmm. people who make the same amount, and so therefore, since child free people have more money left over in their life because they don't have to spend money on kids because we know the average cost of raising a child is over $3,000 these days for their first 18 years. So I kind of agree with Mr. Vance here. Hold, please. Because (laughs) if he is saying that if we recognize people who make significantly more should Mm -hmm. pay more in taxes, I think what he's saying is we should just tax the 1% at significant amounts. Not unless they have children. (laughs) And Elon Musk, we know, has like 18,000 kids, right? But, you know, actually, isn't there a child tax credit? Yes. So they technically do pay a little bit or they get something back that I'll never get. But it speaks to your, like, have more kids, you get more tax breaks, right? I totally understand doing the tax credit for other members of your household that are dependent. I get that. But don't. I get that. And I like flip it over and just be like. You're, it's it's right. just this attack on on child free people, right, right, and right. I have seen because I'm you know in this space and I've been building this child free community for so long. That I've seen this like this commentary that says, "Where did all these child free people come from? Why is this trending? Right. Like, why is it trending?" And it's like this is not a trend. Well, and and what do you mean? Where did they come from? I know, but I am. <laughs> we all start out with no kids. We all came exactly. from parents, you know. So yeah, there's that, right? Anyway, I digress. I I think it's just more about like when we start hearing these conversations. For me, as a you know an identified progressive person, it's easy to just like get into let's rip him this this individual right, apart. Right. But he's right. He's not the only one, right? We talked about at the beginning of the show. There's you know, Andrew Tate, who made those yeah. comments about Taylor Swift being a, a poor role model because she's 34, never been married, and doesn't have children yet. Right, um, right. And I say yet because she's made it clear that she wants to, to have children because she doesn't have children at the moment. 
it's like what you were talking about of where did this value or where did the definition of a woman's purpose connected to bearing children, raising children? That's hundreds, you know, millenniums ago. Mm -hmm. And it's wrong. Yeah. It's just simply wrong. And I think too, like with the revolution in the 70s of, you know, when women started having more rights in our country, when they started having more independence and they weren't dependent on, they no longer had to be dependent on a man for, you know, very simple things, getting a loan, having a credit card, you know, a lot of these things, as soon as it's just what happens that as soon as there's progress, there's pushback. And I think that we're having a hell of a lot of pushback. We did, or I did an episode where I talked about the biological clock. And the biological clock came out of the women's liberation movement. And yeah. some male journalist came up with the term. It has nothing to do mm-hmm. with what's happening in our bodies. And, right. you know, he talked to a couple of women who were like, yeah, I feel like now that I'm working a ton, I am missing out on mm-hmm. having kids right now where I'm missing out on my kids' right. lives or, you know, these natural things where if you do A, you're going to miss out on B. If you do A and B, right. you're going to miss out on, you know, C or whatever it is. And right. these things have been just like blown up out of proportion to where yeah. that Will Chamberlain, Chamberlain, was that his name? Yeah, I think so. Whatever. So it was very close to, you know, another famous Chamberlain's name, Wilt Chamberlain, the basketball st- No idea who that is. You. But that's okay. My God, you're, you're such a millennial. I am. But so, you know, it gives this space to this Will dude to go out and say yeah. that Harris is not fit for yeah. the presidency because she doesn't have kids. And he even goes further and says... Becoming a step parent of adult children mm-hmm. or grown children doesn't. Count. Yeah. And yeah. this is just that further, you know, quote unquote thought experiment that, you know, yep. JD Vance used, that language that he used. It's, it's like throwing it out there. How far can I get? And, mm-hmm. and for me, it's so invalidating because as someone who has so many different words, we we're talking about it, right? right I've got right. pre parent, child less, child free fence sitter, step parent, empty nester. I think it's helpful yeah. to have all of these labels because it, it does define where you are in your life. I do know women who have no biological children and they are stepmoms and mm-hmm. they they have this identity as, you know, they chose not to have children themselves for their specific right. reason. Right. But it wasn't I never wanted to be a parent for them. Being a step parent was completely fine. And they are right, a parent. Right. They identify as a parent. Yeah. It makes me think of adoptive parents and how if we think if we say that being a step parent is less than, then being an adoptive parent is less than. And that goes completely against the, the idea of instead of terminating a pregnancy, just put a kid up for adoption. Yeah. And I think that all these things, all these topics are coming from women who have no idea and no interest, it seems, in my opinion. They have no idea what it's like to be a woman or to yeah. live a woman's life. And they're not attempting to figure it out. They're just wanting to legislate it. They're wanting to talk yeah. about it. They're wanting to theorize about it. They're wanting to discriminate. And Yeah. I And I'll say, too, from my experience, I'm not naming names, but women who sympathize with these statements either have never been in an unfortunate position where they've had to seek health care for a like like in my case an ectopic pregnancy or an uh, unwanted pregnancy or a high risk pregnancy or they're past the age that it's even relevant to them yeah i think you know big piece i had this conversation with my mother who i love we have a great relationship however she struggled for a long time to understand why i was making a whole entire business about being child free and helping child free people find friends because in her experience right. she didn't see that there was this difficulty until right my right. platform and my brand and business or whatever started to gain traction and I started sharing with her a lot of the the trolls mm-hmm. and just the hate 
that I get online just by simply, and she saw how hate-filled strangers were. And it wasn't only, and this yeah. is to your point about people who have, especially women who they have aged out of pregnancy and even really mm -hmm. kind of women's issues feeling re re relevant to them. Yeah. Um, yeah. Is that a lot of the, the feedback I get online is either from men or grandmas. My yeah. mom is a grandma. And so when she started seeing that, that's when she was like, oh my God, there really is yeah. this carved out hatred for people who have chosen yeah. not to have children. And right. we're seeing this, this goes to the point that we were talking about earlier. Of, I don't think the discrimination is new. I think it's just louder no. than it has been because yeah. people are allowed to thought experiment. They are throwing things out to see how far they can get because mm -hmm. there has been that pushback against progressive movements. And when I right. say progressive movements, I should say inclusivity movement. That's 100% what it is. Yeah. It's, it's inclusion. It's give everybody you deserve as much you deserve as much right as many rights as i have yeah and you know regardless of your gender your affiliations anything that includes people who think differently than us yeah we but you're giving people more rights doesn't limit my right oh speak it yeah you know, all and that. that's i think that's the difference is that when you start saying that your rights do limit others that's not a right. Yeah. That's an opinion. For sure. For sure. That's an opinion. But yeah, so I like kind of full circle back to like this includes the comment from the Will Chamberlain about Kamala Harris not being qualified because she's never given birth. And also your village comment. And Kamala Harris's husband's ex wife. Okay. So the mother of his children that Kamala was the is is the stepmother to actually came out in support yeah. of Ms. Harris and said that from the very beginning, she has stepped in and been an amazing, an amazing stepmother. That's a village. I know that you and I were treading as lightly as we could because we wanted to stay on the topic of how do, how do comments like this really impact? us and it not only impacts us it's yeah. like it hurts my feelings it makes me feel icky but as a u.s citizen there are some potential long-term legislation that mm -hmm. could impact my life and there's even a piece of just like when we're mm -hmm. putting these thoughts into into the world i think we've lost with the internet in particular we've lost understanding that words do hurt Right, that sticks and right. stones and all of that. No, mm -hmm. words are, and words hurt our feelings. They do, and it can create more destruction, even if it is, you know, that butterfly effect, and it's, you know, it's kind of rippled out. And yeah, when I hear people talk about chapter people don't have a stake in the future, and I'm here advocating for a group to have a voice, and someone's attempting to yeah. take that voice away, I can see it's not. It's not that we don't have a stake yeah. in the future. They don't want us to have a stake in the future. Three men that we've been talking about in particular, but all the people who are supporting this yeah. rhetoric, you're showing yeah. me who you are. You're showing me that you 100%. are a, that you believe in exclusion. You believe that I am less than because I've chosen not to have kids. And that says a yeah. whole lot more about you than it does about you. Well, and you're scared of people who are different than you. Yeah. You're scared of them having a right to live their lives the way that they want to. Yeah. Because it doesn't fit into your butt. Oh. That's just not right. That's another topic for another day. And we have we <laughs> have tons of podcasts to come. We do. Before we end, because I'm not going to end on that super heavy note. One of the things, you know, <laughs> we started with a wind down and now let's do a little bit right. of wine and wine. This is where our water should be wine. Tell me something that's going on in your life right now. I had a really good conversation with some of my friends' Botox the other day. Tell me more. It's, it's really interesting. So I was at a lunch, kind of luncheon, with some women from another group, and they were much older than me. And I was talking to a younger woman in the group about plastic surgery and Botox. And one of the older women was like, we don't talk about that. 
What? We don't talk about that here. And in mixed company and in public, we don't we don't talk about that. We don't that. talk about Bruno. They're like, okay. We don't talk about Bruno. Mm mm. So I ha- so it's really interesting, like the different generations, what we don't talk about, yeah. what we gatekeep. So, you know, it's it's empowering yeah. to hear my friends who are, you know, late 30s, early 40s talking about Botox. Mm-hmm. You know what? If you want Botox, like there's going to be people that are going to shame the shit out of yeah, you. For sure. If you want to do anything to your face, I say do what makes you happy. As long as you are not hurting yourself mm-hmm. or hurting someone else, do what makes you happy. I'm not a stranger to it. Yeah. And, you know, like, have fun with it. Don't be ashamed. Oh, I love it. We should have, like, a whole pod about this because this in itself is another one of those, like, double standards that society has put on. So I'm so happy that you were able to have that conversation. I know you and I have talked about yeah, yeah. all different types of plastic surgery. I think that people who have never, like, when I actually do have Botox injections, nobody knows. Yeah. They don't know that I have them. You know, it's just me. And and the the point is, is that you look and you do this for yourself. You're not doing this for anyone else. Yeah. You're doing it. So when you look in the mirror, you recognize who you see. It's gender affirming care. And I fully support. I love it. It's it's just yeah. it's also choice. Right. It's just like, yeah, you know, my body, my choice for sure. Yes. Oh, yes. If I want to put toxins in my forehead, <laughs> going to do it. All right. I cannot wait to talk to you again in a couple of weeks. We I are going to have that. another conversation that is just, I don't think we know what we're talking about yet. So we can't even do like a teaser. I don't think so. Of what? I don't think so. Um, I'll have I'll have been to Alaska by then. So maybe we can talk about the Arctic. Cool. Whale watching. I don't know. Wildfires. All of those things. I mean. Cold weather. I mean. Yeah. It was. Cruise ships. Now you just sound like a boomer who's just like throwing out like topics. Bears. Always choose the bear. <laughs> oh, salmon. Oh, always choose the bear. Boom. Always choose the bear. You're right. All right. Yep. Today was great. It I know was. we ended on a little bit of a, you know, a higher note. But for those of you that are listening and you're sitting here, you're child free and you've got family who yep. is agreeing with J.D. Vance or mm. Andrew Tate or this Will Chamberlain dude or whatever. And you're like, how do I talk to them? In the show notes, I've got a whole free starter pack and I've got scripts in there. Scripts for you to talk to people who you don't care about and people that you do because your child-free life matters. You are important and you don't owe anyone anything unless you decide. And so finding that boundary and setting that boundary can be difficult. So grab the starter pack and you'll know how to start talking to people or not talking to them based off of your based off of your opinions and what you need to do in your life. Thank you so much for listening. And Kelly, as always, this is so fun. Well, it was a blast. I hope that we can inspire some child free. And hey, maybe if you've got get a glass of wine, join us. Join us. And join, us. join us and maybe you'll get a glimpse into the lives of your child free friends and family. Yes. And be able to be part of our village. So Please. You can live vicariously through us. Yes. This is the best way to go on, <laughs> on holiday. Just bring the unapologetically child free community with you. I love it. That's right. All right. Ciao, ciao for now, and we'll talk soon. Bye.